This is Rod McMillian speaking. I now call to order the June 28, 2024 meeting of the Audit Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of the committee, at their discretion, after consultation with the staff liaison, may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's Audit Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast from Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by roll call vote. Board members were said their names before making the second motion is applicable, as, as well as when requesting the discussion on the agenda item. As a courtesy to the committee, I ask you that you inform Ms. Jamison and Ms. Barb that they must be recalled by using the Chief Chat to inform the committee. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll to determine the presence of the phone of the committee. Hi, this is uh, Dwayne Edwards uh, with the Internal Audit Department. I will be doing the roll call for the meeting. Uh, thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Lichter. Present. Ms. Frempong. Present. Mr. Young. Present. Mr. McMillian. Present. A quorum being present, where we begin. Mr. Edwards, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Barr. Present. Ms. Stevens. Present. Ms. Manna. Present. Mr. Fletcher. Present. Mr. Strait. Ms. Sample. Ms. Crew. Present. Ms. Jamison. Here. Ms. Smith. Present. Thank you. Are there any other attendees present that I did not recognize? Uh, yes, this is uh, Chris Hartlove. Present. Chris Hartlove, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Great. Hearing Ms. no Evans, additional names, you. I turn the meeting back to you, Mr. McMillan. Thank you very much. Opening remarks. Good afternoon. If committee members have questions that are outside the scope of this report, of these reports presented this afternoon, please email Ms. Barr or me with your questions. We will follow up with appropriate individuals to get answers to your questions. Item number three, unfinished business. Ms. Barr, please proceed with the FY25 FY28 Office of Internal Audit Work Plans. Thank you, Mr. McMillian, and good afternoon, committee members. In accordance with Board Policy 8400, I'm responsible for completing an internal audit work plan that is to be developed based on a prioritization of the audit universe as defined in International Professional Practices Framework using a risk-based methodology, including input of executive leadership and the board. I will monitor and adjust the plan as needed in response to changes in BCPS business, risks, operations, programs, systems, and controls. As such, any deviations from the approved work plan will be communicated to the audit committee and executive leadership through periodic activity reports. As a reminder to committee members, each fiscal year, we design our work plan to be ambitious and we include more projects than we can realistically complete due to the unknown number of carryover projects, unplanned projects and investigations that we will need to complete each year. However, that is the significance of a risk-based plan as it allows for flexibility and the opportunity to address emerging risks or areas of concern for the board and the superintendent and to shift priorities that were initially identified at the time of the completion of our annual risk assessment. In accordance with Board Policy 8400, our work plan is to be reviewed and approved annually by the Board's Audit Committee by June 30 of each fiscal year. Therefore, I am respectfully requesting that the Committee approve the revised FY25-28 FY work plan submitted June 26, 2024, that includes the addition of school activity fund accounting review in the Division of Fiscal Services, the addition of the Facility Support Services Facilities Maintenance Audit under the Chief Operating Officer, and reviews at the schools that will be cyclical um, areas of focus that will be identified based on our risk assessment, 
and also identification of schools based on continuous monitoring results. Additionally, we have deferred these six projects to the long range plan. Equity and cultural proficiency, equity and proficiency training and support, English language arts pre-K through 12 ELA curriculum based assessments, ESOL and world languages, ESOL exams and assessments, and also world lang language staffing, absence management, FMLA and EAMP, and enterprise solutions, AI. Okay, is there any discussion on this item committee members? I see a hand raised. I'm not sure who it is from where I'm seated, so please speak. Hi, it's Miss Lichter. Just one Great. um question. Um items 19, 20 and 2 all seem to be about school activity funds. Why are they separated or am I misunderstanding something? It we just added it as a separate section. Um, Ms. Lichter to uh, the work plan because it had not been included in the work plan originally. So we just had it separated out um, in that regard. With respect to item number two, the thought process was is that in order to conduct a proper risk assessment and ensure that the schools um, are doing what they need to do, we need to look at the school activity fund um, rules and regulations that are um, set out by central office to make sure that those processes are operating effectively and efficiently. So once we get that done, then that'll help us to um, better look at what we need to look at at the schools. Because the, what, what is done in the Division of Fiscal Services, that is the internal control over uh, what the schools do. Right, I just meant that there seem to be three separate ones all about school activity funds. Do they need to be three different audits or can they be combined into one audit? There are three separate audit activities. OK, thank you. Welcome. Committee members, any additional questions? This is board member Krimpong. I have some yes, questions. Yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you. So I'm trying to make sure I reconcile because the, the numbers got changed on some of the audits. Um, for ID number three, there's the college and career readiness. And so the question is based on there's going to be changes coming with the Maryland blueprint. And so there's a different definition of career ready and for the criteria for the student to access the college courses are going to be different. So is the audit going to use the current standards or the new standards laid out by blueprint? It would be the standards that are in place at the time that the audit occurs. So if, okay. if it means that the um, that the rules are going to change, we would probably wait until the new rules are implemented. Okay. Got it. Thank you. And then um, let's see it was previously ID number 12. I think it's ID number eight now. Yes. OK, so for the temporary services and Kelly services payments, um, I do like this audit, but the board we actually recently approved a Kelly contract um, to extend our existing contract with Kelly. And so I guess it's just and I asked questions about the vacancies and what is the effect or the impact of our Kelly contract. So I guess it's just the timing of the audit because something like this would have been great information to have before that contract was up for extension to the board. So I don't know if that's something just to consider for future kind of in comparing contracts that may be up for extension um, versus when we're doing the timing of when we're actually doing the audits um, on that. So that yes, was certainly we can take that in, that we certainly can take that into consideration for future audits. Thank you for that feedback. Thank you. And then ID number 16 has to do with our infrastructure. Um, there it is. OK, so determining if the various network infrastructures provided are robust, secure, efficient, etc. So the question is what criteria or whose criteria is actually used to determine if the infrastructure is robust and and or secure because we previously had a cyber attack and I'm sure that we thought the system was robust and secure then. So what type of criteria and whose criteria are we using? I would like uh, Mr. Fletcher to speak to that question, please. 
Certainly. And Mr. Pong, thank you for the question. Um, so what we actually do, and this would really be with any type of audit, uh, we would find what those industry standards would be. Uh, and in this example, and we have done IT audits in the past. Typically, we would look um, at the MSDE level. I, I apologize, my camera went back off. Uh, we would look at the MSDE level to see what standards they have uh, related to uh, information security. And then we would also look at industry standards such as NIST um, or, or other IT general controls. Does that answer your question? I apologize. No, OK, great. I was trying to put my mic back on. Yes, thank you. Certainly. Okay. Also, um, I, I believe the federal fe federal regulations as well as CIS. Perfect. OK, and is there any effect on these audits by our implementation of ERP? 15 and 16, actually, for um, audit items. I'm sorry, I, could you repeat the question? I, I didn't hear it exactly. Sure, so for autumn items 15 and 16, is there any impact uh, by the implementation of ERP since we know that we're trying to move to, you know, a better system? And what items 15 and 16, could you repeat what they are, please? Sure, so 15 is, so 15 and 16 as a, uh, kind of category they fall under the network support services and so 15 is as far as the availability integrity and effectiveness of the enterprise data backup and is it and disaster recovery services and then 16 is the network infrastructure is a robust secure efficient etc right um I'm not sure if it will necessarily have the impact with the ERP because we would be focusing on the I you know, the actual IT piece of it versus the ERP system itself. And it, it's two different things. It's, it's we're looking at the um, integrity and effectiveness of the da data backup and disaster recovery services. And also um, with network infrastructure, whether or not those infrastructures are robust and secure and efficient. So I think the ERP system is a little bit different and that would be a subset of that. I don't know that necessarily that we would have a focus on that. Um, and we would be looking to uh, review the ERP system once it has been implemented. I understand that it has been pushed back at least the first two modules to um, July 1 of 2025, which probably makes more sense um, because the modules are HR and payroll related. Okay, thank you. And yeah, you're right, but I guess I was thinking more so too from from the data when they're talking about data backup and but okay, it sounds like there's a there's a clear plan laid out. So, okay. Right. Um and then I think one more um So for items 10 and 13 together, um I was wondering about adding um, so for item 10, it's speaking about the extended suspension. I'm sorry, I'm trying to navigate these windows as I'm speaking. Um, and the tentative objective is to determine if the related suspension and expulsion policies and practices ensure fairness, consistency, and compliance with legal and ethical standards. And I was wondering about adding equitable um, to that item as well and then same thing for 13 when we talk about our teachers and the certified board training um, are they effectively and equitably implemented um, there's a reference to blueprint pillar number two um, which does talk about high quality and diverse teachers and leaders so just adding um, more information so the equ equity piece to 10 and 13 and that's it for my comments and questions I have no objection to adding those uh, words to the items 10 and 13 as they are tentative objectives. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm just curious, Mr. Young, do you have any questions? I do not have any questions. Okay. It appears the discussion is over. May I have a motion to approve the FY25 FY28? Office internal audit plan work plan is presented this afternoon. 
So move, Lichter. Can I have a second? Second, Young. Now that we have a second, Mr. Edwards, please call the roll. Thank you. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Frempong? I apologize. I abstain. I thought we were just going for the school year 25. So, I abstain. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. McMillian? No. So, what's our move now? We had two votes in favor. Is there anybody out there that can advise us of the next steps? I'm not sure. Ms. Frempong, um, just so you know, we have a multi-year plan. The focus is will be on per, uh, fiscal year 25. 26 through 28 obviously is subject to change. We do a risk assessment annually to, to um, make sure that we're moving the right projects into the current year that need to be addressed sooner rather than later. Does that so make thank sense? you. It, it does. And so when I was reading through, I saw it said multi-year plan, but then we're supposed to have annual work plan preparation. So what exactly are we approving? Are we just approving the fiscal year 25 and then the 26 through 28 in the attachment is just for reference? Or Correct. are we actually still signing off? OK, so I didn't I didn't know that that was fully clear for me when I was trying to read through the documents. Um, OK, my apologies. Let me go back into the document. Provides. OK, now back to my original question. We had two vote yes, one abstain and one no. So we don't have a. A majority, which would need to be Correct. three. Can within Robert's rules. What, what do we do next? Anybody out there? This I is for member from Pong. I'd like to make a motion to to redo the vote um, on the on the proposed plan. Um, this is Ms. Lichter. I'll second that motion. I don't have a problem with that if it's all within the rules. Uh, OK, Mr. Edwards. Please take another roll call vote. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lichter. Yes. Ms. Frempong. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Mr. McMillian. No. Mr. Okay, Miller, we were just so, voting on the voting on whether we should revote. Is that your okay. no for no revoting? <laughs> Boy, just leave it that way. Okay, I just want to make sure that that, okay, that was so clear. Okay, so let's go back. Now we're going to vote again on passing the work plan. I need a motion to pass the work plan. Correct. Is that the next move? Yes. So move then, Young. I need a second. Second, Lichter. OK, we have two. OK, we have support for that. Mr. Edwards, please ask us to vote again on the work plan. Well, can we do any discussion? If you want to, certainly. So and this is up to you, Mr. McMillian. Would you mind explaining your no, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. I'm going to save my no for a later time. OK, thank you. I don't have any more questions. OK, Mr. Edwards, would you please? Thank you. Take a roll call vote. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. 
Just for McMillian. No. Okay, we needed three votes. We have three votes. The work plan will move on to the full board with recommendation. I don't know when that's going to occur. So that concludes the meeting. The next meeting of the audit committee will be on Tuesday, September 17, 2024 at 4.30 p.m. Any other comments from anybody? No comments. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Take care.